they say, every day is for the thief, one day for the owner of the house. But ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, has reversed the role. It is now every day for the owner of the house. If you're involved in bribery, over-invoicing, or any shady deal, the day of reckoning has come. ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, is watching you. If you're reported for any corrupt practice, you'll be investigated, prosecuted, and punished. Corruption is harmful to our nation. Join the campaign against it by reporting any corrupt practice to ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. Let we join hands with ICPC, make up the time. Let's make Nigeria great again. ICPC, they want to hands for corruption. Break the chain of corruption now. Don't give, don't take. This message is brought to you by ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. The Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Act 2000 defines a public officer as a person employed or engaged in the public service of the Federation. This public officer is a holder of public trust and is expected to take decisions for the public good. Unfortunately, sometimes this trust is abused and public officers take wrong decisions to benefit themselves and not the public whom they are meant to serve. Such abuses are throughout the rot of the law. ICPC has handled some cases of abuse of office by public officers who were prosecuted and sanctioned by the law courts. We bring you highlights of some of these convictions as secured by ICPC recently. Welcome to Corruption Must Go, ICPC's weekly television program. I am your host, Hawa Sani Gerber. But first, Ruth Awodi is standing by with details of anti-corruption stories. Welcome to this segment on anti-corruption stories. I am Ruth Awudi. ICPC has arranged the Deputy Chief Registrar of the Federal High Court, Port Harcourt, Mrs. Nkem Apolonia Mba, for alleged involvement in fraudulent activities. Mrs. Mba was docked on a three-count charge before Justice Latim Nyodi of the Federal High Court 12, Port Harcourt, for offences bordering on abuse of office and corrupt demand of gratification by a public officer. One of the counts revealed that the Deputy Chief Registrar received a kickback of 500,000 Naira through her bank account from the purchase of automotive gas oil, popularly known as diesel, and other products. She, however, argued that the money was her 2% entitlement according to Order 16 of the Admiralty Jurisdiction Procedure Rule 2011. The accused pleaded not guilty when the charge was read to her. Consequently, her counsel, S. Somiari, applied for bail, praying the court to grant her bail on liberal terms. The bail application was not opposed by the prosecuting counsel, Dr. Agada Akogu. The trial judge, in granting the prayers, admitted her to bail in the sum of 500,000 Naira with a shorty who must have landed property in Port Harcourt. Justice Unyodi further ruled that the accused must deposit her international passport with the court registrar. The case was then adjourned for commencement of trial. In a related development, ICPC has arraigned one Mr. Alana Muzubir Olayemi, a web programmer too of the University of Ilori, for alleged contract fraud and abuse of office before Honorable Justice Adenike Akinpelu of Kwara State High Court sitting in Ilori. The university staff was accused of holding an indirect private interest in a contract awarded to Global Wise ICT Solutions and Technology Limited of which he was the sole signatory to the company's bank account. 
The commission, therefore, in a two-count charge preferred against the accused person, informed the court of how the public servant used his position to confer corrupt advantage upon himself as the beneficial owner of Global Wise ICT Solutions and Technology Limited, in which account of the contract sum of 9.9 .9 million naira was paid. The said contract sum was meant for the provision of basic and extended portal services. When the charges were read to the defendant, he entered a not guilty plea. His counsel, Salman Jawando, then prayed the court to grant his client bail, which was not opposed by the prosecution counsel. The trial judge therefore admitted the accused person to bail in the sum of two million naira and two shorties in like sum. The shorty must be a blood relation and a responsible resident within the jurisdiction of the court with evidence of ownership of landed property and of affidavit of means. The case has been adjourned for commencement of hearing. In another development, RSPC has hosted the 8th Stakeholders Focal Point Meeting on the Sustainability of the Rule of Law and Anti-Corruption Rollout Programs. The Rollout Programs, funded by the European Union, was launched in 2017 to enhance good governance in Nigeria by strengthening the rule of law, curbing corruption and reducing impunity. Speaking at the meeting, Rollout Component Manager Mr. Emmanuel Uche noted that the meeting was called for participants to exchange ideas on what everyone was doing in the entire program's objectives. In his welcome remarks, the Secretary to the Commission, Professor Musa Usman Abubakar, commended the stakeholders for their tireless efforts to meeting the set objectives of the program, just as he wished them a fruitful deliberation. The meeting was attended by representatives from Federal Ministry of Justice, Nigeria Correctional Service, Legal Aid Council, Technical Unit on Governance and Anti-Corruption Reforms, TUGA, Bureau of Public Procurement, BPP, and a host of other stakeholders. That will be all on this segment. Corruption Must Go continues with Hawa. Stay with us. Fellow Nigerians, do you know that constituency projects are actually your projects? Do you know that constituency projects are funded by the federal government? Do you know that you can track release of constituency project funds for projects located in your constituency and follow up to know how they have been executed? Constituency projects happen because government does not want to leave any community out in development efforts. You have a responsibility to know what constituency project has been planned for your community, how much has been allocated for it, and whether value for money has been delivered. Take ownership of constituency projects located in your community. Protect them because they belong to you. Government knows about your needs and is planning for you. Government needs your help to ensure quality delivery. Know that constituency projects are actually your projects. Protect your constituency project. My constituency, my project. For information on funds allocated to projects in your constituency, call 0800-2255-4272. This message is from the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission and the National Orientation Agency. Welcome back. ICPC recently secured a seven-year jail term for a public officer in the Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation, Mr. Amdi Monde Gideon, for his involvement in employment scam. In the case filed against him by ICPC at the Federal Capital Territory, High Court 17 in Guagualada, the convict was accused of demanding the sum of 250,000 Naira and receiving the sum of 162,500 Naira from an applicant with the promise to procure a job for him at the Federal Civil Service Commission. ICPC counsel Michael Adeshola gives us details.
conflict in this case is uh, anti Gideon Monday. He demanded and obtained money from an applicant that is looking for a job for recruitment into the government service, which is against the law, and which he collected the money from the applicant. And that is the offense of the conflict, which he was tried for and convicted for. The offense is uh, punishable under the ICPC Act, especially the offender is a government official and he demanded money to recruit an applicant into the government service. Thankfully, the government service is not for sale. It's free and on merit. That is only the mer those who merited it and were recruited into the government service. Employment in Nigeria is regulated by laws and rules. And all these laws and rules are designed to get the best into the government service, not to be by patronage or by favor or by other considerations. So the government agency, the government agency and government service is supposed to be for merit, those that qualify, those that merit it those that have been trained in character and in competency to occupy government office. So anybody that is trying to recruit in the government service must make sure that they comply with the rules and regulations. You see that when government wants to recruit, they bring out an advertisement for everybody that uh, qualifies for that office to apply. So from there, government is going to shortlist the people that merit the criteria set for the, the recruitment. So for anybody trying to recruit into the government service, it behooves on them to comply with the rules and regulations. Number one, to advertise for all interested candidates to apply. And then for them to now sort out from the application receipt, those that uh, qualify for the office they are trying to recruit for. And it should not be by bargain or by, by favoritism or by nepotism. It should be of merit. And that's why government offices and government uh, positions are going to attract qualified and competent people. That is, the, that is the things that is necessary for anybody recruiting into government agency to comply with. In a related development, ICPC has secured conviction of a former special assistant to the chairman of Giwa local government area of Kaduna State, Hassan Dauda, to 12 years imprisonment for his involvement in the 6.3 million Hajj funds fraud. Dauda, who was charged before the Kaduna State High Court by the ICPC, was accused of defrauding eight persons of 6.3 million Naira. ICPC Shewiaya explains the details of the offense as committed by the convict. Yeah, it's a case that was investigated by our Kaduna State Office to involve a former special assistant to the chairman of Giwa local government in, in Kaduna State who defrauded some intending pilgrims to Saudi Arabia. Well, he gave them the impression that he would be able to secure uh, seats for them to travel to Saudi Arabia for the uh, Hajj.
pretty much some years back that wasn't the case he tipped them of their hard earned uh, money and left them stranded at the airport so when the report came to our officers we started the investigation of the case and he was arrested promptly as he was returning back to the country the investigation was concluded he was charged to court and recently the case has just been completed and he was convicted for the crime he was convicted for advance fee fraud and also using his office to confer a corrupt advantage on himself Once it is an offense, he, uh, what I didn't even add was the fact he was also uh, charged for criminal breach of trust. You know, uh, the people he defrauded are ordinary uh, peasants who really had uh, confidence that he was going to help them fulfill their religious obligation. And he being an official of uh, government, they had a lot of respect. And he expected that he would treat them uh, fairly as he should, but that was not the case. He abused his office. We, it's very bad. As a public officer, he, any public officer is expected to exhibit the uh, highest level of um, uh, integrity. And uh, the people who come before him to seek for public services are supposed to be treated in fairness. You understand, and this local peasant uh, thought they could get that from him, but that was not the case. He abused his office, he abused the trust they reposed on him, and he used that position as a government official to enrich himself to the detriment of this local uh, peasant. Some of them uh, been saving the money that was taken by this man for years. Is for them, it's a life. Uh, long ambition and only for them to be treated the way he treated them was was, was appalling. I mean he, 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 he secured uniforms, bags and left them stranded at the airport when he knew he could not provide the services he just wanted to arrange himself at their expense. That was, that was really appalling. Yeah, the penal code one, the penal code, the penal code law of um, uh, Kaduna State, a criminal breach of trust, and um, the advance fee fraud, because, and also the corrupt practices under the Related Offenses Act. He used his office to confer a corrupt advantage upon himself, and he was duly convicted for that and sentenced variously to various uh, jail terms. Firstly, I think all those who try to assess public service should go through the proper channels. Trying to cut corners, because sometimes it's not only peasants that get duped. Otherwise, well-educated people get themselves into the same situation when they try to cut corners, when they try to get, uh, when they try to avoid going through the normal procedures to accept, to assess uh, public services. So that's, if, if you go through the normal processes, you endure, you persevere, um, the chances that you are going to be duped in the same way is, is, is almost non-existent. And secondly, I think those who are given the honor and opportunity to serve the public should do so with the highest, uh, with integrity. I mean, it's, it's not all will have that opportunity to serve. Uh, to abuse it in such a manner is, 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 is really a pity. Well, they, they, they should know the fact that the the administration of uh, criminal justice sometimes may be slow, but it surely catches up with all those who break the law. The case has been in court for a while, but eventually the law caught up with the offender and it has been dealt with accordingly. Corruption can mess up every good thing a nation has. A nation is blessed with every good thing all around. When I care, we gonna get there. Just ask me how. It starts from you and I. Make you say no. When they give you bribe or ask you for bribe, make you say no. If you're there for office and tempted to steal, make you say no. We can only kill corruption and greed. Show
are watching Corruption Must Go. In the same vein, a Kano State High Court presided over by Honorable Justice DJ Aboki has convicted and sentenced two civil servants, Helen Ode and Zainab Musa, to three and a half years and six months imprisonment, respectively, for conspiracy, impersonation, and making false statements to a public officer. The convicts were charged by the ICPC on a three count charge bordering on forgery and ancillary offenses. <music> Also, a high court sitting in Inlaw Inquiry State, presided over by Justice M. Abdul Ghaffar, has sentenced Al Hassan Yahya Bagudu, a former chairman of Kayama local government area of the state, to one year imprisonment for making false statement to an investigator. Bagudu was charged to court by ICPC on a two count charge, bordering on making false statement to an investigator of the commission. took advantage of their office and the public trust placed on them to commit fraud, thinking they would escape the long arms of the law. Public officers at federal and state local government levels are expected to draw lessons from these convictions by being upright in their conduct and doing the right thing even when no one is watching. Remember that public office is public trust. Do not betray it. You can watch us via our YouTube channel, Reach us through our social media platforms and contact us through the following addresses as shown on the screen. See you again next week. Bye for now.